author is funded by the Pacific Northwest Writers Association, supporting writers from pen to publication since 1955. To learn more about the PNWA and their yearly conference, please go to pnwa.org. Hi, this is Bill Knauer of Author Magazine, and today I'm at the Pacific Northwest Writers Association's Writer's Cottage in Gilman Village in Issaquah, Washington, with Kandara Blake, author of Three Dark Crowns. Kandara, welcome to Author. Thank you very much for having me. You know, one of the big leaps a writer has to make is, you know, you're a reader, and so I assume you, you probably admired and loved the people who wrote these books for you because you, it meant so much to you, to think I could do that. Did you know any writers? I didn't. Okay. I'd met, I met Nancy Carlson, who wrote um, the picture books, like Harriet and the Roller Coaster. She mm. wrote the picture books with like the, the anthropomorphic dog and the rabbit, best mm. friends. And she was the first writer I ever met. She came to my elementary school to do a signing. I was a big fan. She did a little, like, a little Harriet doodle in my book. Yeah. But as far as talking to any writers or contacting any writers, in my brain they were so far off. I right. never tried. Right, that was how it was for me too. It didn't even cross my nope. mind. And it's funny now that you are an author, you know how untrue that is, really. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the picture. So I always think it's an interesting leap to say I could do that. Like I'm that foreign entity that can almost be deified sometimes by oh, if you really love them mm -hmm. to say I belong up there. And so when did you begin to have the idea that that's something you could really do, or you'd like to even consider? Well, I mean, yeah, because once you start writing. You hope, you know, sure. you're like, am I good enough? Right. Can I write something worthy to stand, you know, not next to these people? That seems ridiculous. If your last name. But, <laughs> but, you know, like on a shelf somewhere, maybe in the vicinity in the same store as my idols. That's right. So I start, I think in high school, I started to wonder, you know, maybe started to write with the eye towards someday getting something published, but I never really thought that I could. I mean, I went to school to be an investment banker because I thought, well, I better have a backup plan because this writing thing's never gonna pan out. But it did pan out. Yeah. Talk about that first book. Mm. Which um, I know you published a small publisher, but you gotta get started. Right, yes, Sleepwalk Society. I actually wrote while I was working in a cubicle at a miserable job that I hated. So I would wake up at three in the morning, um, write on Sleepwalk Society, and then leave for work. Three like, in the morning. Three in the morning, because I had to leave for work by five to get there by six. And it took me about six months of doing that. And then I, I just let it sit, you know, because it's, it's your first book. You don't know where you're going and you with didn't it. Know, and so you let it sit because you thought, why did you let it sit? Why well, not? Well, I let why it not? sit because I'm like, well, what do I do with it now? Because I was completely starting out. I didn't know didn't much know about, about agents. Okay. I didn't know much about querying. I was just starting to get into that business side of the writing world. So as I was doing that, um, you know, I started to get more and more caught up in that stupid job. And then, you know, circumstances transpired that I, I left uh, the country oh, okay. to do my master's degree in creative writing. Uh, after oh. and the book was still kind of just sitting you there. You left the country to do I that. I left the country. Yeah, I went to London, Northern London, Middlesex oh. University. Mostly as an excuse to live in London for a year, but as long as I was going to be there, why not study writing? Right. So, I did that and before I left, I had found an agent, but she was just starting out and she was not like a real agent. She right. wasn't a real New York agent, but I didn't know. And she uh, submitted it to a bunch of places that really you didn't need an agent to even submit to. And one of those places, about a year after they'd been holding on to it, I had already come back from my master's degree, and that's when they said, hey, is that still available? So that's how that happened. Excellent. Now, you know what's interesting? You tell that story, and I, I, I teach a lot of writers, and one of the biggest challenges they have is say, I can't find the time. And the thing I always say to them first is, well, every writer has a job for the most part. And the, the, the easy, the mechanical way to, ha to find time is to do exactly what you did, which is to get up earlier. Not necessarily three, but sometimes <laughs> at six if you had to go to you, but a couple hours earlier. Now, here's what I want, if you can think back, because, and, and I think anyone could logically do that, but it's hard for people, I think, and maybe you could talk about this, because they're not, sh they, they can't get over the hump of 
am I wasting my time by getting up at three in the morning? Because you'd had no guarantee that this was going anywhere, and yet you were there every morning at three. So how did you overcome, or maybe you never lived with the doubt as you were getting up at that time? When I'm writing, I don't think about that stuff. When at I'm, all? No, it's, it's a compulsion. Like, if I don't write for a couple of months, I get very cranky. Like there's, yeah. Cause yeah. The story it wants to be like it's in there and it it needs me you know to tell it. Right. So I'm not happy if I'm not writing and I think I knew that hey I might just be writing this for myself but it's still worth it. Because you still enjoyed the because experience. I still, I, I still love writing to this day when writing is going well it's my favorite part of the process my favorite part of the job but I was still hopeful you know I was mindful that it could possibly go somewhere but it just felt like something I had to do. Right. And it was, so you never entertained the, the question, is this a waste of time? Never, never even entered your mind. I would never consider writing to be a waste of time. Why not? No matter what, I'm, it's, Why not? to me it's just such a rewarding The thing. experience the, is rewarding. The experience itself is rewarding. And even if nobody ever reads it, I actually, the book that I wrote before Three Dark Crowns is probably never gonna go anywhere. My agent, we had talked about it. I told her about Three Dark Crowns and this other idea at the same time. And I could see the stars just light up in her eyeballs when I told her about Three Dark Crowns. Mm. But I said, no, I want to write this one first. And she's like, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, I'm going to do it. You know, give me six to eight months. I need to do it. And then, you know, if you will, right. please look at it. And she's like, sure, I'll look at it. So I wrote it and she looked at it. And of course, you know, she's like, okay, great. Go write Three Dark Crowns. But I don't consider that time a waste. I, I love that book. I don't care that it's just me and my agent and my husband and my close friends that will ever read it because I needed to tell that story anyway. And now I feel better. It's done. Are you hard on yourself? Or are you pretty compassionate towards your when it's working and when it's not working? So oh. when you write something that's not going, are you really hard on yourself or do you forgive yourself I'm, quickly? I'm completely hard on myself. But I can't tell if it's not working until after it's done. So that's really helpful for the process because I don't stop myself and I don't get caught up in my own head. Right. When I'm writing, I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> it's good. Do and you write fast? I, if I do 3,000 words in a day, I consider it a good day. That's pretty I, good. I can write faster than that. These, I've kind of painted myself in a corner with these last couple of manuscripts and I've had to do them in about a three, two to three month span. Um, 90, 100,000 words in a two to three month span. Do you outline? No. Yeah, you don't seem like an outline. Um, but after that is done, you know, that's a first draft, and then I'll let it sit for a while. And by the time my editor comes back with edits, she'll be like, okay, we'll change this and this. And I'm like, no, no, we'll change everything. <laughs> this sucks. It all sucks. And I will like rewrite it from top to tails because I can see, you know, after right. it's done, I can see all the flaws, and it drives me insane. So. Kandara, I have one more question for you. And what I'd like you to do is finish this sentence for me. Mm. You ready? No. <laughs> you can do it. If uh, writing has taught me anything, it's taught me what? It has taught me about people. It's taught you about people. It's taught me about people because I think I watch people in a different way and I try to understand them in a different way. Oh, that's interesting. And can you remember sort of the first time you were aware of yourself relating to people from that author's distance? I can't. It, you know, you're sitting in a cafe one day and you're watching somebody and you just see that that moment that they're experiencing right there is such an interesting part of their day story. And you wonder about them and you just start kind of spinning off. So, but those moments happen. You never know when they're going to happen. You never know when you're going to see somebody that's going to inspire you that way. So I can't remember the first time, but it happens a lot. Mm -hmm.